Are you glad to be here tonight? There's about five of you that are. Are you glad to be here in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I, I'm excited about what God's going to do tonight. Not because of us, but because of him. Amen. The Bible says that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. It's what the word of God says. You believe that tonight? I believe it with everything that is within me. And I'm glad that he's right here. He's right by your side. Amen. Turn to the master, he'll be there for you. No, he's there by your side, he's leading you through day and night. Know that the Lord will be there for you. Cause and he Sinning in the pew, you're feeling the Lord moving on you. Go to the altar, he'll be there for you. No, he's there by your side, he's there to day and night. No, that the Lord will be there for you. Yeah, yeah. And he's right.
Because I'm telling you, I, I don't know what I'd do without him. Amen. Amen. Uh, this morning, I, I woke up and uh, walked to the front of the bus. And, and I thought, where am I at? <laughs> and I looked out and finally, and the first thing that I saw was three crosses sitting right in front of the bus out there. Show me the cross and I can find my way home. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful for that too. And uh, we're... We've just been excited about what God's doing this week. And uh, last night was awesome. Yesterday morning was awesome. But guess what? Tonight's a new night. We're not going to live in the past, okay, church? We're going to press on to the future, what God said. We're going to press on to the mark. We're going to lean in because guess what? The race is going to get a little harder. Amen? And, uh, and I'm glad that just a little talk with Jesus makes things right. Amen? Well, I once was a lost in sin, but Jesus, he took me in. Then a little light from heaven, it filled my soul. Well, it made my heart a love, and it wrote my name by my heart. Just a little talking with Jesus, and it makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus Let us tell him all about our trouble He will hear our faintest cry And he will answer by and by Now when you need a little prayer will turn it And you know a little fire is burning You will find a little talk with Jesus Makes it right Let us tell him all about our trouble He will hear our faintest cry And he will answer by and by Now when you need a little prayer will turn ya And you know a little fire is burning You will find a little talk with Jesus Makes it right Well now Let us tell them all about our trouble He will hear our faintest cry And He will answer by and by Now when you need a little prayer We'll turn it in 
song earlier and a good friend of ours wrote this song and it's called He Broke the Chains and um, it's talking about Paul and Silas he broke the chains he broke the chains in the people's life you can get it over there I better hurry up and, um, but he can do the same for you tonight he can break the chains in your life listen to the message of this song Would not fall in silence and they were thrown in a jail Bound in chains and shackles they were deep within their cell But at the midnight hour they began to pray And then my God came down and he broke the chains Cause he's the key to your problem He's the answer to your prayer He hears your cry from heaven When you feel nobody's there When chains seem to bind you Just call upon his name My God is good at breaking chains yeah. I was in a prison, I was sinking in despair And nobody seemed to listen to me, and nobody seemed to care And then in my affliction, I called upon his name And then my God came down and he broke James, God, he's the key to your problem. He's the answer to your prayer. He hears your cry from heaven when you feel nobody there. When chains seem to bind you, just call upon his name. My God is good. I pray. Cause his name is Jesus Oh, 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 God, he to your problem He's the answer to your prayer He hears your cry from heaven When you feel nobody sick When chains seem to bind you Just call upon His name My God is good at breaking chains He'll break your chains. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because there is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the skies, and no more tears to dim these eyes, and all is What a day, glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be, oh, in my Jesus I shall see, and then I look upon His face. The one who saved me by his grace, and then he takes me by the hand, and he leads me to that promised land. And what a day, the glorious day. Sorrows there, there'll be no burdens to bear, there'll be no sickness, no more pain, there'll be no parting over there, and forever I will be with my Jesus. He died for me. What a The one who saved me by his grace, and then he takes me by the hand, and he leads me through the promised land, and a word I say, glorious. I shall see and I look upon his face. I'll sing that part one more time. And I look upon his face. Sing it one more time. And I look upon his face. The one who saved me by Clap of praise.
that song speaks about us meeting our Savior. And those of us that have grown up in church, we've sung that song all of our life. We've seen it in the heavenly highways. We've seen it in the inspiration hymn books and so many others. But I want to tell you, it's going to be what a day it's going to be for those people who don't know Jesus. They're not going to understand what it means when he takes me by the hand and he leads me through the promised land. Oh, they have a promised land waiting on them. They have a promise that's waiting on them that if they do not accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior, they've been promised and guaranteed that they will spend eternity in a hell. It's going to be a sad day is what it's going to be. Oh, what a day it's going to be. Those of us who know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we sing those words, what a day. It's going to be. We look upon his face. We get excited about that. We can see the vision of what our minds can even picture heaven to even look like. We get excited about that. But what a sad day it is going to be when those that have never met Jesus personally in their life come to that point in their life where they stand before an almighty God at the great white throne judgment. A lot of them's going to be walking around looking. I don't know what it's going to be like there. I know this much. It says that many in that day will say, but Lord, Lord, didn't we do this? But Lord, Lord, I did this in your name. And he says, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. You want to know why it's important that we invite people to come? Because you and I know what a great day that is that it's going to be when we know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But we also know something. That if they don't meet this Jesus, if they don't meet him personally, what a day it's going to be for them. Have you ever stopped to picture in your mind? Have you ever stopped? We've talked a lot so far about friends inviting them to church. But have you ever stopped to think about what it would be like if that friend that you know that's lost and that friend was to die and go to a devil's hell and them to be able to call you back? say I wish you would have done a little bit more it's been what a day I can remember singing that song when I would attend church but how come you didn't tell me how real this place hell is how come you didn't tell me more about it we need to be real we, it, it needs to be how much Jesus talked about hell he talked about it more than heaven and if my Lord talked about it it's important it's very important well you know when we get together we, at, at, we'll, we'll eat together but we, we just don't talk about religion then because it just makes everybody upset well my goodness get over it make them upset Maybe they'll get under conviction and call upon the name of the Lord. They can only run for so long. They can run, but they can't hide. I want you to picture what a day it's going to be. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's going to be tears of joy. There's going to be happiness. There's going to be thrill 
well to know and to meet our Savior as he reaches his hand and he takes us, as that song said. Oh, I don't know what it's going to be like at that moment when I open my eyes in glory, if it's to meet him in the air or if he calls me away from this earth before. I couldn't tell you what it's going to be like. I'm not even worried. The only thing that I'm worried that I can tell you that thrills me is I'm going to open my eyes and see my Lord. That's all I know. And when we go and tell others and we bring them and we show them what Jesus has done in our life and the light comes on, the Holy Spirit convicts them and draws them and they accept the Lord. Then that song. And when he takes me by the hand and he leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be when my Jesus I and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promise, Ponder 
us molded in His image Cause He wants me to stay Oh, but when I stumble Am I my best soul it breaks? You see, He just picks up those pieces Cause He doesn't throw the glory away Over and over He molds me and makes me Into His likeness He that 
the potter would take that lump throw it down onto that wheel then he would begin to mold it up and bring it up into something Thank you. and if it had a crack in it he would or begin to flaw a little bit he would beat it back down again but he didn't take that piece of clay off and throw it over on the side he just shaped it up one more time amen, amen. aren't you glad that that's what God does for us amen. I'm so glad I, I'm telling you I walked in thinking exactly what the Lord had and wouldn't you know it laid my Bible up here and I, the Lord said uh, you, you're in the right book but the wrong chapter you know sometimes I believe that's where we're at we're in God's house but we ain't got in the right chapter yet we say well we're, we're not here, really hearing from God I used to. I still come to church. Well, I can tell you it's not God's fault. I can tell you that. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn over to the book of Acts. Chapter 8, verse 30 of the chapter 8. If I was going to put a title on this one, and I, I don't do a lot of titling or whatever, but I'd say he ran to him. He ran to him. We don't mind telling somebody else what they need to do, but when it comes to us, what will we do? If you'll stand in honor of the reading of God's Word, let's read this one verse. So Philip ran to him, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you are reading? Let's read that one more time. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you are reading? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. God, I thank you for it being true from cover to cover. And Lord, that it is a guide, a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Lord, I ask you right now that you'd use me in any way you see fit that brings you glory and honor. Lord, I pray you'd fill me with your words that it wouldn't be my words, but it would be your words. And Lord, I ask you one more time, there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray your sweet Holy Spirit would draw them unto you and that they would accept you and realize their condition, that they're lost and they need a Savior and that they would accept you and be saved this night. Lord, I pray that you would give us legs to run. Now speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So we find out here, Philip had been in another place and the Lord called him over here. He didn't know really why, what was going on, but all of a sudden, he was headed through. And he began to hear this eunuch. This eunuch was of high statue. He was not a commoner, if you would, but he had a, a great place of authority. And this eunuch was reading the prophet Isaiah. And so the Lord sent him over there. And then the Lord told him a commandment before that passage of Scripture he says, overtake him. 
And right there is the key that I want us to spend a few moments on tonight. God has given each one of us an assignment that when we know him as Lord and Savior, we've been set aside. Some of us have been set aside for different things. That's why it's called the body of the church. There are some that are the hands. There are some that are the arms. There are some that are the feet. There are some that are the legs. And then there is the head, and that is Jesus Christ. And so if you lose an arm, guess what? You become incapacitated to a certain point. It doesn't mean that the body dies, but it just means it doesn't function as well as it once did. So each one of us have been called to do whatever God has said for you to do. But I can tell you there's a common call that we all have. There's a common call to go out and to compel them, go to the highways and the hedges and to compel them to come in. We have all have that call. We're all commanded to love one another as Christ loved the church. So there are a lot of common things. But when God gives you a task to do, when God tells you to go overtake that person, this is where we're at. Lord, send Brother Jamie. You know I can't talk well. Lord, you know, I just can't do that because we have all these excuses. We'll line them up, we'll stack them up, and we'll put them all in front of God. Here's Philip. Never has met this eunuch. God has called him over here to this place. He has never met this eunuch before. And all of a sudden, God has told him to overtake him. Did Philip say, well, let me pray about that. Is that not what we do today? God tells us something to do and what do we do? We say, well, let me pray about that. My friend, if God has told you to do it, there ain't no need to pray. You just need to get busy because he'll equip you. And so Philip, as he's making his way along through there, all of a sudden God tells him to overtake this unit. Philip didn't back up. See, that's the problem today. We get to the point, we've been excited about the revival meetings. We've been excited about a lot of different things. And when it gets down right to crunch time, we start backing up. We'll talk about, it's easy to talk about it on the phone. It's easy to talk about things. We're going to make plans. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. But all of a sudden when we got to run, we got to get our legs up under us and we got to run to overtake what God has told us to go and do, then we begin to back up. We find all these reasons why. Oh, you don't understand. It's liable to rain. You don't understand. I'm going to have to do this and it, this will require me to do this and I, I, I just can't do that today. Philip could have stopped long before he took off running. But the Lord had placed him in a certain place at a certain time for a certain task. I'll tell you tonight, you've been placed here at a certain time for a certain thing for a certain task. You have a task to do. It may not be standing up here preaching. It may not be over here playing the piano. It may not be leading worship, it may not be playing the drums, but it might be picking up your phone and calling somebody. It might be driving your car over there and pulling up at their house, giving them time to get dressed and you go knock on their door and when they come to the door and they say, hey, what's going on? Hey, man, I want you to go to church with me. Oh, no, man, I ain't got no way to get there. Well, I'm going to wait on you. You can ride with me and I'll bring you back home. We've been assigned a task, but what do we want to do? We want to hand the task off. We want to hand it to somebody else because it's easy for us to brag on somebody else. Well, they're a little bit better equipped than I am. But if God called you, if God assigned you and gave you a duty, he expects you to do it. Philip didn't sit there and argue. I can't find anywhere in the scripture here where he says, uh, uh, Lord, let me pray. No. No. It says, so Philip ran to him. 
talking about run to the eunuch, run to the task that God gave him to do. We've got so many excuses today, and I've, I'm one of those. Man, you ask me about something that's out of my comfort zone, I can give you 9,000 good reasons. Brother Marvin, why I can't do that? Man, I've got some doozies too. Man, I, I, you know, well, I just can't hold up to that no more. You know, it's, it's a little hard for me. I, I, I don't remember well. Oh, we, we can stack them up, pile them up. But guess what? Still doesn't affect what God told you to do. That task is still waiting on you. So the Bible says that Philip ran to him. Now I want to get a little personal with you. Has God ever told you to do something before? Some of you ain't got real. I'm going to ask that one more time. Make sure, my, is my mic working? Check, check. Has God ever given you a task to do? Yeah, I think you heard it that time, okay? Now then, I want to check it again. Have you ever not done the task that God's given you to do? Did you feel all happy inside when you didn't do the task? Do you think that Philip, if he hadn't overtook the eunuch at that point in time, do you think he would have said, glad I didn't have to do that. I hope somebody else gets, gets to him. Well, they were moving a little too fast for me. I, I couldn't catch up with, well, I didn't know him well enough to talk to him. We've got all of these excuses. But the Bible says that Philip ran to him. And as he began to get closer, guess what he began to hear? The eunuch was reading the prophet Isaiah. And he was reading about Jesus. So Philip, he asked him this question, do you understand what you are reading? I say, here's, here's the meat. When God gives you a task to do, when God says for you to run and overtake somebody, he's already preparing a way. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, he's already made a way because there is the eunuch. His heart is already ripened up. It's opened up. It's been plowed. It's got fertileness in it. It's ready for a harvest to come. And so you find that here's Philip. He's running along, and as he gets up closer, and here is... He's the administrator. I mean, this guy is way up in this kingdom. And he hears him reading the prophet Isaiah. Don't you know that Philip went, man, this is going to be better than I thought it was. And he asked him that question, do you understand what you're reading? See, God will prepare a way. In the hardest situations, the hardest circumstances, when God has told you to go forth and to get on and to take care of business, guess what? He's already made a way for you. So why do we back up? Why is it that we stop at that point? Why is it that we would rather watch that group move on and we stand on the shoulder of the road and miss what God's got for us and miss what God wants us to do I want you to understand something tonight each one of us that task that he has put before us he will equip you he'll make a way where it seemeth there is no way and if you'll just put legs under what he's told you to do and get busy guess what you'll get further down the way and you'll say man I, I never dreamed I'd be able to do this and you'll look up and you'll say thank you Lord Thank you for the opportunity that you placed before me because all of a sudden you have somebody that you've met, you've met them before, and it has affected their life. Not because of you, but because of Jesus Christ abiding inside of you and you being busy and you running to them and to take care of what God told you to do. 
You want to know what's wrong in church today? It ain't the preacher. It's me. Because I decided not to run no more. I decided not to get excited about Jesus no more. Now, I'm not talking about having to tear the building up, humping pews. I mean, if God tells you to, go ahead. I ain't going to bother me at all. But I'm telling you, we have forgot to run. We've got to the place in our life where we're not going to run no more. Well, I'm too old for that. I won't run no more. I want to tell you, if we'll get busy about what God's told us to do, He'll give us the energy. He'll give us the fire. He'll, he'll put a, a pep in our step. He'll spin things around. The only things that I can relate to you, I can tell you what the Word of God says, what I've read and what I've studied about, it, but I can tell you what He's done in my life. If I was to stand here and to tell you, I never would have dreamed, Brother Marvin, that we would have stayed 300 nights on that old bus last year. If you'd have told me that five years ago, I said, you're crazy. Ain't no way. If you would have told me ten years ago that my son would be married and his wife would be singing with me, I was, I was like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think that ever happened. I mean, I knew Jonathan would be singing. But I never dreamed that I'd have a daughter-in-law that I love so much that sings and plays and writes music. I never dreamed I'd have a second son as a geek. <laughs> that I love very dearly. That I've watched God set him aside and call him to preach. I never dreamed that Penny and I would sit at that table in that bus day after day looking at each other sometimes scratching our head thinking how's this working it's because we ran when God said go we ran you can look at the circumstances and I, I can throw some stuff out on a piece of paper and you can't make it work only God math makes it work Amen. and that's what he says here's the blessings See, when we get busy and do what God says for us to do, he's got things that we can't even imagine. He doesn't have to, but he loves his children. Philip got to do something that most folks don't ever get to do. After he was obedient and he got up and he preached Jesus to this eunuch, this eunuch said, what hindereth me from being baptized? There's water right there. They step out of the boat. The eunuch, had, the, off the carriage, the eunuch got saved went down and he baptized him and when they come up guess what the Bible says it says that Philip was transported to another place beam me up Scotty if he hadn't have been obedient he never would have received that blessing you can say well what's a blessing like that you ask how many folks have been transported someplace before I know of a couple and that's about it I can tell you what God will do if we will run to where he tells us to go. Oh, but you can choose. You can choose to just keep your seat and uh, save your spot and make sure nobody doesn't sit in it. Make sure nobody doesn't do. And see, here's what happens. When you, when you hold on to your place and you make sure that you're not doing what you're wanting to do, guess what? Then the next thing, you know, you're talking to somebody else and say, oh, no, there ain't no need to do that, you know. I thought about doing that, but it just didn't, you know, I couldn't see that it was going to help out anything at all. And so all of a sudden you started hindering somebody else. And then it just becomes a chain of events. My friend, if you'll get busy and you will run to what God tells you to do, all that other junk that follows along beside will go to the wayside and you'll see where God wants you to be. There's, I still get amazed. I still wonder why in the world am I preaching? Four and a half years ago, Brother Jamie, if I stood here and said a sentence, we'd, I'd stutter through about five words. And if somebody didn't stomp their foot, we'd be here all night. 
I'd get hung on a T or an R and it'd just be all over with. It'd just be R, 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 R until somebody stomped their foot and then I'd move on. But God said to run. He said to overtake where I want you to go. And because of that point, not because of me, but because I've gotten obedient, as a dad, I said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to run to where God says to go. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I just like to sit still. But after about 24 hours, Brother Marvin, it gets to gnawing really big, doesn't it? And God says, go. Overtake. He's told a lot of you to run. Some of you have jumped up and ran to a couple of tasks. And on the way, you trip and fail. Instead of getting up and brushing it off and saying, no, we're going on. Turn around and walk back to the house. You might say, well, Brother David, I'm really tired. I'm tired. I'm tired of getting beat up every time. I'm tired of talking to people and inviting them to church and getting them here and loving on them. The next thing you know, they stab you in the back. How many times did the Lord say to turn the other cheek? How many times are we supposed to love as Christ loved? Guess what? When he was on the cross, he could have uttered the words, come get me. And the Bible is very clear about what would have happened. What would have happened? But no. As he prayed in the garden, he said, Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done, Father. Oh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. When you take off running, guess what? If I was to take off running right now, start out in a good, brisk job, I might make it to the asphalt right outside the door getting to that asphalt over there and all of a sudden I'd realize that I, I'm not really conditioned and then as I begin to make my way on towards the sign over there by the time I got to the sign I, I'd be down to a fast walk and if I was going to try to get over there to the store I'd be walking probably crawling because I had not conditioned God tells you to do something you run to it guess what that first may not be a long run you take care of business you do what the Lord says to do and then the next task that he gives you it might be a little harder run but guess what you become conditioned and then the next thing and then all of a sudden you find yourself standing out in front of people preaching and watching how he will cause you not to stutter I know. I know. And because of obedience, because of obedience, because of what Philip did, that eunuch accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And we don't know what the impact was on that. I'm sure that it had an impact because of who he was. You don't judge whether or not it's good enough for you to go and tell somebody about Jesus. You go. You let them make that choice to accept or reject Him. Maybe you're here tonight and you've stood many times as the runners do at the starting blocks. You've had both feet down. You've had your palms placed in the correct positions. And when the start gun goes off, you stand back up and say, catch the next race or maybe you've got down and you pushed off the blocks and you hit it as hard as you could and you fell flat on your face 
he said, I can't do this no more. The outcome is this. What's the price of a soul worth? What is the price of a soul worth? Is it worth you getting uncomfortable? Is it worth me getting uncomfortable? Is it worth me being a little tired? Is it worth me not listening to what God says to do? It's worth it all. A soul is worth it all. Because if all of heaven rejoices over one coming to know the Lord, it ought to be our goal and our task. We ought to be in the starting blocks constantly, ready to run. We ought to be ready to run. Christian, maybe you're here tonight. You've been busy here at the church, and, and I know you have. I, I've heard a lot about what's been going on from different individuals. And after being here uh, a few months ago and getting to meet so many of you, and maybe you say, I'm just a little tired. Run. Run to what God's told you to do. Run. Don't worry about who's beside you or who you're following. That's maybe a little bit ahead of you. You just run. God will take care of you. I can assure you of that. He will. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never met this Jesus. The book of Isaiah says he was led as a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before its shearers is silent so he opened not his mouth in humiliation his justice was taken away and who will declare his generation from this life is taken from the earth Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God came as a babe in the manger born in the lowest place that you could be born in a stable grew up the son of a carpenter walked on this earth just as you and I knowing his destiny was a hill called Calvary and because of that, even knowing that, he said, I love you so much that I am willing to give myself in your place. I will die for you. I will suffer for you because I love you that much. And I don't know, I've never met nobody in 53 years it said I'll die for you even though I don't even know you that I stand in but I know one that did and his name is Jesus have you ever met him as your Lord and Savior do you know him as your Lord and Savior If I could beg you tonight, if I could plead with you to, to be saved, I would do it, but I, it's not my place. If I could save you, I would, because hell is a very real place. As I shared with you, our Lord talked about it more than he talked about heaven. <laughs> If I could say a prayer that would save you, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd put a big bullhorn, Brother Marvin, on top of that bus. And 24 7, somebody be on top of that bus, we'd be driving up down the road. Because if me saying a prayer or someone saying a prayer would save you, I'd drive all over this place. Because I want everybody to know Jesus. But my friend, it has to be you. 
you have to realize who Jesus is in your life. You have to realize that he died for you. You have to ask him to come into your life and into your heart and forgive you of your sins. And you have to ask him to save you. And my friend, when that happens, and when you accept him, guess what? You'll be ready to jump down there and get in them starting blocks. And you'll be ready to run and tell somebody else about what he did in your life. Because he'll put that in you. Have you met him? Have you met Jesus? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. There's no other way. It's him, Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads right where you're at? If you were to die tonight, where would you spend eternity? I want you to think about that question. Because it's a very real question. If you don't know, if you don't know, if in your mind you say, I think, heaven, I think I'm okay. If it's not a sure thing, I'm just going to ask you to get up right now and make your way down here. We're going to have some folks to meet with you and pray with you. You don't have to look around. You don't have to think about anything except where will you spend eternity? And if you're not sure at this very moment, I would you would come right now maybe you've realized something tonight that God has called you to do some things and you've just been disobedient maybe you've just passed the baton to somebody else and not even run your leg of the race maybe you've piled up your excuses in front of God if that's you tonight and you know that you have not done what God wanted you to do why don't you just come and cry out to him I want to tell you if you'll go back to that point in time and say Lord I want to run to whatever it is that you want me to run to you'll go back to that point and you'll cry out to him you'll, you'll bury your face in this altar and you'll say Lord I am so sorry I know that I was supposed to do give me another opportunity see that fellowship with the Lord begins to get separated when we start rejecting what God tells us to do, then there starts to begin a wall being built up. Listen to me. The Lord is not laying the bricks. It's me and you. And when we start rejecting what God says for us to do, it's like we're taking a big cinder block and we're beginning to build a wall. And each time that we do that, that wall begins to get a little higher and a little higher. And before long, there's a wall that's been built between you and God. Between me and God. But guess what? There is a way. When there may be a great wall in front of you right now, but there's a way. And God says, I'll remove that wall. It's when we come and we confess and repent and we say Lord I am sorry if that's you tonight why don't you come why don't you come amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once 
heart's first loss But now I'm found T'was my life But now I see Father, right now, I ask you, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit has moved about Lord, I know you've shown me things in my life. And Lord, I pray right now in this moment in time, Lord, the things that you have told me to run to or the things that you have told people to run to that we didn't do. Father, I, I pray right now that we would get obedient. Lord, we, we've asked for revival. We've we're praying for revival. We're praying for the lost to be saved. Lord, may we run to where you want us to be. Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior of their life, I ask you right now, God, that you would give them the boldness to step out to call upon you, to accept you, to have your way this invitation in Jesus name would you stand I'm going to encourage you to run to run some of you need to run back to some places and pick up where God told you to run to some of us need to get to a point in our lives where we're ready to jump into the starting blocks because we've we become unconditioned anymore. It's because we, we come to church and the only time that we pick up our Bibles is when we're at church or when we're walking out the door to go to church. My friend, if you want to get conditioned, you're going to have to prepare. You're going to have to read His Word. You're going to have to talk with Him. And He's going to train you. He's going to build you. Some of us are just standing there waiting. We're waiting for somebody else to kind of push us a little bit. It's time that we stepped out and got ready to run and to get into the race and quit worrying about somebody else. We need to get into the race. reigns Oh, it's amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. It's a word my hope sank you. Heal my shield and portion be as the Lord as a life hinders I'm going to ask you this one thing what is the price of a soul worth there are starting blocks that are waiting there are places that we need to run to because God has told us to like throwing a rock out onto a pond that ripple will finally cover that whole pond when you just back up and you quit doing it that ripple will affect people around you
Uh, we have an opportunity every night this week. So when you leave your house, go dig in the couch cushions if that's all you got. Bring a little something. Don't want to mask it, okay? Uh, they got some stuff back here that they sell. They got uh, CDs. They got a, don't say you got no cash, I also got some bank cards, they, they got you hooked up right there, they get you go. And they come prepared, amen? They're not like me. <laughs> amen, so tired of it. Lord Jesus, how good you've been to us tonight. Yeah. God, you just, uh, you just feel you wave your hand right over the crowd, Lord, and hearts are just melted for you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for this one tonight, Father that gave her life to you. I thank you for the many decisions that was made here tonight to run towards you, Father. I thank you for this young man here, Lord, at such an early age would say, I just love my family enough to love you, Lord. God, I thank you that you allow us to be here and be a part of these things. Lord, I just uh, pray now that you bless and we give back. God, that you bless those that give and uh, bless the gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to have some, uh, some more games uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, tomorrow night, I promise you. I, I, me and God spent most of the day discussing Ford engineers because I had to put a thermostat housing on a, on a, on a Ford Explorer track. Uh, we decided we didn't like them. <laughs> Why in the world would they ever admit something like this? God made everybody different, I reckon. But, uh, so I didn't get, I'm trying to say all that. I didn't get a lot of time to work on, on the, our events for the week today. But I will have something better tomorrow for the week today. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow is youth night. Uh, all of us know some youth. Some of them would love and some of them would like to choke. So just bring them off. <laughs> Amen. I had 20 watching online tonight. So you was on TV tonight, sir. That's a great fellow. <laughs> I had a guy that I rode around with a long time ago and we called him here a while back. And he said, uh, what you have to tell you about We called back to What are you doing down there? I said, preaching. That's exactly what I heard. I heard the preaching. I said, you still there? Yeah. So what do you think about that? He said, I think that's pretty scary. And about two sentences later, he hung up the phone on me. <laughs> Run to God. Yes. God's got something to do. Yeah. We ran to God in an old dump of a restaurant down here. Didn't we? Uh, you need to come Christian. Came, came, uh, came in one Wednesday. Floor was all buckled, the ceiling had collapsed. We were spending so much money, we couldn't even repeat it no more. Uh, I had already talked to people about this building, and they were not interested. God told us to call a preacher back, begging me to come to it. So I said, okay, I'll call a preacher back, begging me if I have to. I called him back and uh, he said, I ain't a preacher there anymore. He said, you call the preacher that is there. Oh, okay. So I called the new preacher. He came down here and opened the doors. We started having the church here. God sent somebody else to buy the building, give him some money to remodel the inside of it. He's fixing to give him some money to buy this one over here. What can God not do if you're just obedient? Well, that's what I have to do. I didn't want to call that guy. I'll be honest with y'all. I didn't. I love working with this corn down the ring. And what I was going to do. And I said, I'll call that guy again. He was rude to me the first time. Why would I want to take it the second time? And God said, do it. Do it. Because I said, do it. Do it. Whatever God's telling you to do, you need to do uh, Back tomorrow night, uh, 6.30 for prayer time. And uh, our little devotion before service, getting ready for service. Make sure you uh, grab somebody and drag them. Tomorrow night, right, Steve? I'd like to say something. Yeah, go ahead. Y'all might not think it's important to invite these youth, but I look back there and I see Hannah who invited a couple of little kids to come to the youth meeting. Oh, yeah. What does that lead to? That leads to Bailey. Cameron and all those come to the youth meetings and invite people. And then Bailey gets a little girlfriend, and now we have three more people. 
Well, I can challenge all the youth more. At least bring a couple of friends. Yeah. Hannah invited one to one, one the church on the youth night. It ended up to the whole Stringer family being here. It was a great increase for one faithful child. Just do your part. Just one. Just do something. Don't sit here. When we look sit around together, it does in the house. And Brother Martin, why don't you dismiss it? All I wanted to joy. And it has been for